irresistibly drawn to this place. Its natural beauty overwhelms the senses. They come to play, to relax, to discover, to Hawaii for excitement, adventure, romance, renewal. But on the windward side of the island of Oahu, there is something more. The world of Polynesia, the way it used to be, the way we wish it could still be. Polynesian Cultural Center at Laie remembers Polynesia, the centuries-old lifestyles, customs, arts and crafts of the South Pacific are preserved here the way they were before the modern world changed them forever. And you can meet the people of Polynesia. Welcome to my world of Fiji. Polynesian Cultural Center is located. If you remember, Bula is Fiji's greeting word. But the song itself not only greets Laie, it greets other countries that are represented in the center. And it also reminds the Fijians of who they are and it encourages them to be their best so that they can be an asset to their nation. <laughs> My name is Keith Hawaii and I'm from the island of Oahu. I'll be your guide today through our ancient Hawaiian village, the host village here at the Polynesian Cultural Center. Hey, aloha, hey, anavalua, aloha, kukua, tupa, rosella, he moa nike, alai, kaponila, ue, ue, ne, when the visitor comes through the Hawaiian village, if there's anything I want to give them or share with them, it is the real meaning of aloha. Aloha is a Hawaiian word that consists of two smaller words. Alo was the companion that was always at your side. The ancient Hawaiians believed that no matter what, that person was always there. As I understand, it didn't have to be a physically alive person, it could have been a spiritual partner. It was the custom anciently that when the Hawaiian people were on their deathbed, they would pass what is called the breath of ha. If they wanted to give all of their knowledge and wisdom to someone in particular, they would call that person to their bedside and would breathe into their mouth. They believed with this passing of breath, this ha, would go all the knowledge and wisdom they possessed. Aloha is a constant companion that is there to give you knowledge and wisdom.
This form of dance is called hula kahiko. It's ancient dancing, dancing that was done prior to the arrival of Europeans strictly to chant and percussion instruments. Anciently, it was in honor of the fire goddess Pele. It talks about the places she resided and historically it was done as a form of prayer and not a form of mere entertainment. All dances of Hawaii all tell stories. This particular number is a descriptive dance and describes the area of Mount Ma'aleva and Puna and the ocean there and how the ocean turns the pebbles and how the sounds of the pebbles can be heard throughout Puna. It talks about people that visit the crater and go down to the bottom of the crater to pay respects to Pele. In Tahiti, we say Yorana. It means you are welcome here. in Tahiti is called the Tamure. It's very different from the Hawaiian dance, the graceful hands. See, in Hawaii, you watch their hands as they tell the story. But in Tahiti, we tell our story from our hip shaking. If you don't watch our hip shaking, you're missing the whole show. I'd like to invite you to stand up, please. Everybody, your hands above your head. Okay. Bend down just a little bit. And now, push your knees one at a time, front and back. Good. Keep going. Now, try to go faster. Thank you, ladies. What about a big hand for the ladies? When I will give the tourists, I will teach them of my culture. I want them to learn the dance before they leave. Beverly and Greg. I hope the tourists will learn the happiness, the joyfulness that we have within the culture.
The leaf is a token of peace. If you stand on it, it means that you come to fight. If you pick it up, it means that you come in peace. Kia ora. My name is Varen Berryman. I am a Maori from New Zealand, and I will be your host in our village today. To me, I like to see people enjoy themselves, especially when they come into my village, into our village of New Zealand. When they leave, I'd like them to leave with at least knowing something about New Zealand. And so what I try and do is I try and put them at ease by having fun with them at the gate first or by just doing something that they'll enjoy, like the pukana, which is just basically sticking out my tongue. To a lot of people, they've never seen it done before in that form, and so when they see us do it, they are surprised and they, get, they do get a bit of a shock. It does scare people, but it makes them more relaxed. And I like to see people enjoy themselves. A lot of the tourists have a hard time learning to do the poi ball. They end up hitting themselves. And it's fun to watch them try and get it. The hardest thing for people to do when learning the poi ball is to remember that they have to keep both hands going at the same time. So they end up wrapping the poi balls around their heads or around their body or somewhere. <laughs> and it, it can be kind of funny watching them learn it. The poi ball in our culture played a very important role. It became our form of percussion instrument.
Because the loss of culture and tradition is so extensive in the South Pacific, many of the students who work at the center must be taught the history, crafts, and customs of their own islands. Now, Captain Cook was the first white man to come to the islands, and when he went back to the mainland, he spoke about us. And the New England missionaries came prepared. They brought lumber and everything, and they started to build houses. And this is a sample of the first house built in Hawaii. For the visitor, the Polynesian Cultural Center is a link with the past, a world of beauty and tradition that is rapidly disappearing throughout much of the South Pacific. But to these young Polynesians, the center is also a means to an education. They are students at the nearby Hawaii campus of Brigham Young University. The Polynesian Cultural Center makes their education possible by providing jobs and scholarships. Not far from the campus and the cultural center is the Hawaiian Temple of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Since 1963, the Mormon Church, as it is better known, has operated the nonprofit Polynesian Cultural Center to help preserve the fading heritage of Polynesia. Talofa, welcome to my village of Samoa. Welcome to Samoa. You know when you come to our village of Samoa or when you visit our islands, you have to say talofa. You can't say aloha. <laughs> okay, so I want everybody to say talofa. Talofa. <laughs> Terrific. Welcome to our cooking place. Remember this area belongs to the men, friends. In Samoa, the men do all the cooking for the family. Ladies don't cook. That's why I ran away. <laughs> come here to get more education. <laughs> Someday I'll go back and change it. Mm. Take a microwave oven <laughs> with me. You know, folks, as I said, you don't see ladies here. See the men here doing the cooking. Every day we cook, we always use the coconut milk. Now, to get the milk, you must have a ripe coconut. Now, this one is ripe. You can tell by its color. It always turns brown. See? It turns brown like me when it's ripe. And it tells me that some of you are not ripe yet. <laughs> <laughs> as a joke. <laughs> yeah. We also use this object, see? You're gonna use this, this is what we call mele. Mele. Say that. Mele. <laughs> Good. <laughs> In English, sharp stick. <laughs> Say it. Sharp, sharp stick. stick. <laughs> <laughs> now we're gonna use the stick for husking the coconut. First step. <coughs> Yeah. I killed it. <laughs> Second step, you have to push it down. Ah. Hey. And here's the coconut. <laughs> it's not a watermelon. Yeah. Then follow two simple steps until your coconut is completely husked. Now, I was doing that in slow motion for your convenience. In Samoa, <laughs> this is one of their competitive sports among the young men and women. Racket for the men, three seconds. Ladies, two days. <laughs> we let the ladies cook, then we'll never eat. <laughs> then we all go to McDonald's. <laughs> now we also learn how to crack coconuts. To crack it, you have to study the face. This line here is the softest part of any coconut. So all you do is get a hot object and hit right across that line. You can use hammers, knives, screwdrivers, dynamite. <laughs> In Samoa, we use our foreheads. <laughs> you don't believe it, do you? <laughs> Close your eyes. <laughs> no, a lady from Canada came here last week and told me that she put a coconut on the ground and ran it over with a lawnmower. Uh, <laughs> a young man from Texas, he's 45. 
and shot the thing between the eyes <laughs> while his mother-in-law was holding the coconut. <laughs> Please don't, don't do that, okay? See, let me show to you what we use. Now, Island's Bridge is used this. <laughs> See this? This is a rock. Okay. All you do is hit across the line. If I don't come out into two pieces, please don't blame me, because <laughs> I'm a few as I'm on. This is a Hawaiian coconut. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Believe it or not. <laughs> And that's the end of our demonstration, folks. If you have any questions, take them with you. Thank you for coming. Have a good day. And talafa! The end of this demonstration is you want them to walk up. Everybody smile. Everybody's happy. That is the main thing. And at the evening, we do a special program that we call the Fear Fear. It's a farewell program. After doing the dances and singing the songs, we also have our last number, which is our um, a farewell song, To Far My Feeling, or Goodbye My Friend. Also, we sing in English, uh, Oh, I Never Forget You. Cultural Center, you will remember most about your visit here. University Hawaii from the friendly kingdom of Tonga. Let me show you my village. Tonga is called the friendly island because it was originally called by Captain Cook. He was so impressed with the friendliness of the people, the way they welcomed him and treated him. So that's why he called us the friendly island. Many of the visitors who come through the Tongan village don't know much about my culture. All of us who are working within this village, we are all natives from the islands of Tonga. We are the last remaining monarchy in the South Pacific. We still have a king and a queen as ruler of our country. Our king is not a figurehead as it is in a British system. He really rules and directs us. He has the final decisions for everything that takes place back home. And also when they come in there, we share with them our history, demonstrate to them things we do like the tapa cloth. But in the ancient time, we used it for our clothing. And also, ladies and gentlemen, this material is very important to the, the people of Tonga. In a wedding or a funeral, whatever we have to do with this material, if we don't have money in our hands, doesn't matter to us. But if we don't have any tapa cloth or fine mats for our special occasions, we don't know what to do. My work here in the center is a very good experience because when I started working in the Tonga village, I didn't know anything about my culture. So working here, I could learn about things I never knew about my culture. I could also do things that I've never done before. We treat you and welcome you to the center, just like how we treat the people in our homeland.
the Polynesian Cultural Center, where Paradise Lost is found. Oh, yeah. 